Good morning. Ooh. <laughs> and welcome to worship here at Zion. We give thanks to God for the gift of our lives, for the gifts of God's presence, and for the invitation to worship here. Just a few announcements for us before we enter into this time of worship. If you are a home communion minister, or if you have ever wondered about this ministry and wanted to learn a bit more, next week we're going to have a meeting uh, for all of our, everyone involved in home communion ministry. This is an opportunity to get together, learn some um, new ideas we have, um, new resources that we have, um, as well as share encouraging stories with one another. We know that this is a ministry that has blessed um, not only those who are receiving the gifts when they're sent out, but those who are sent with the gifts of communion. So we thank you for your ministry, um, and please, if you are able, we'll be gathering next Sunday between our worship services, um, so hopefully right around 9.30, but we'll see how long our service takes. Good morning. <laughs> Secondly, we have, um, there is another community meeting regarding the um, potential site for the 24-7 shelter at First Christian Church. Um, that meeting will be held on Wednesday, Wednesday the 31st uh, at 6 p.m. So if you're able to make it, um, it's great to show up, listen to your neighbors, hear what they're saying, um, share your voice. We are also a neighbor in the community, um, so please do show up and show out and be part of the conversation. And that's all of the announcements I'm gonna read out loud for us, but as you know, there's always more announcements in the bulletin, um, so do please take a moment just to review some of the upcoming events and fill out the connection sheet. You'll have an opportunity later in the service to put that in the offering plate um, to help you get connected with some things that are going on around here. And now, as we enter into confession and forgiveness, let's take a breath to ground ourselves here in the presence and power of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us lift our voices in praise together. Thank you. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of abundance, you are faithful in all your words and gracious in all your deeds. Give us eyes that look to you, mouths that speak of your glory, and hands that open to share your abundance with the world. We pray in the name of Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to invite forward all of the kids for Kids in Christ. Come on down. Come on. Come hang out with me. Oh, it's so, it's so difficult. Hey, do you want to sit in the shade of the sun? Thank you. See, you always have a friend here at church. You might even have two. Three. Oh, here we go. This is what we call community, right? Amen. Well, oh my goodness. Is there a different seat anywhere? No, this is the one. This is the best one you got. <laughs> well, I'm wondering, I have a question for you all. Does anyone have a favorite food? Tacos. Zach, what about you? You have a favorite food? Ice cream? Me too. <laughs> Do any of you ever get hungry sometimes? Yeah, sometimes you're, oh, always. Oh my gosh, what does it feel like when you're hungry? Mm, me 
need food? Does your, does your tummy growl? Yeah. Do you sometimes get hangry? Like you're annoyed at everything around you? Yeah. When we're, when we're hungry, we're not always our best selves, right? Yeah? Because we're waiting for food. Well, there's a story in the Bible that tells us about a time when not just one person was hungry, but everyone was hungry. Can you imagine that? Ooh. It wasn't just the kind of hungry like when we're waiting for lunchtime, like where we know food is coming. It's the kind of hungry when we don't know the next time we're going to get to eat. They, it, there's a word for it you, they use in the Bible. It still happens in our world today. It's called a famine. A famine is when everyone is hungry at the same time because there isn't enough food for the people. So the food they were expecting wasn't there, and everyone was hungry for a really long time. So what do you think happened? What do you think they felt like? This is our imagination. What do you think they felt like if everyone was hungry for a really long time? Hmm. Sad. I think they felt sad. Yeah. Scared. Yeah. What might happen? Cranky. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, even though they were sad and scared and cranky, the people kept trusting in God. And one day there was a man who he had some food. And even though everyone was hungry, he brought some of that food to share as an offering to God, a way of saying thank you to God, because even though he had a little, he had something. So in, this, in the Bible, this kind of an offering is called a first fruits, taking the first of what you have and giving it as a sign of gratitude to God. And he brought it to the, this guy who was a prophet, a prophet who prays and talks to God all the time. And the prophet said, take this food and share it with everyone. Okay, he had a few loaves. <laughs> what do we think might happen next? Well, stay tuned. There were 100 people and 20 loaves. I see some math happening here. A <laughs> hundred people, that's a lot of people. Do you think there might be a hundred people out here? So taking some loaves and sharing with, what's that? Oh, the, that's right. Not like a loaf of bread like we have, like slices. The word loaf in the Bible is actually probably something really small, maybe like you could fit in your hand. So it's not a big loaf of bread. But everyone was really surprised and said, that's not going to share with everyone. You can't take a few pieces of bread and share it with everyone. But the prophet said, try again and trust in God again. And they did. And then there was enough for everyone. And they even had more left over. So sometimes only one person's offering can actually help a hundred people. It's really amazing. And when we listen to God's invitation to be generous too, we have opportunities to help other people. So I brought a bag with me today. This is called, I want to call it a good neighbor bag. That's not what it's called. Something. Good neighbor bag? Great. We're calling this a good neighbor bag. <laughs> <laughs> this is our good neighbor bag. It comes from some of our neighbors, our friends at H&S, um, which is House of Neighborly Service. They help people in our community. So what do you think I might have in this bag? Bread. That's a good thought. I should have put bread in this bag. I don't know if we have any. Ah, pretty close. I have some. Ritz crackers. Kind of like bread. So I have some food in here. But I also have some information. Because you can share food, and bread might feed 100, but information might connect people in a way that we can feed a thousand or more. So whatever you have, even if it's Ritz crackers, even if you have just a little bit, even if you just have information to share, you can help somebody out. No matter how little what you think you have to give is, listen to that voice that says thank you to God and to share with others, and you can feed a hundred people. So will you please pray with me? Loving God, Thank you for showing us that our gifts are important to you and that when we share, you can do miracles. Amen. 
All right, and we have a memory verse that we've been working on. If you remember it, great. If you're learning it for the first time, try to catch up. I'm just kidding. We'll do it together. Um, this, this memory verse comes from Psalm 145, and it's verse 13b, so the second half of verse 13. Uh, we're going to pair some sign language with those underlined words, and I might need a little help with this, um, so we'll help each other out. All right, do you want to stand while we sign? Use the whole body, right? We engage all of our person, the mind, body, spirit, voice. Okay, let's read it all together. It says, the Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. All right, the Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious... (laughs) In all his deeds. Oh, we got like 70% of that. Let's do it one more time. <laughs> the Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. And that comes from Psalm 145, verse 13b. All right, thanks for coming up. Great friends, you can go back to your seats. Our first reading for today comes from 2 Kings, chapter 4, verses 42 through 44. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God. He brought 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So Elisha repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. So he said it before them, they ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The word of the Lord brought abundant provision into a situation of scarcity. How can we respond to evidence of God's abundant provision in our lives? Psalm 145 gives us some suggestions. Please follow along in your bulletin and we will read this responsively. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power. To make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raise up all who are bowed down. The eyes eyes of all all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our reading from 2 Kings this morning may sound familiar to some of y'all, even if you haven't actually spent much time in the book of 2 Kings. So a man came bringing food from the first fruits to Elisha. 
Elisha says, give it to the people and let them eat. There's some doubt. And then everyone is fed and they have some left over. What other story or stories from the Bible does this story from 2 Kings remind you all of? Fish and loaves, yes. Someone else said something? You all said something. Feeding of the 5,000, yeah. So this, the feeding of the 5,000, the story of the loaves and fishes, that's um, a miracle that is recounted in all four gospels in our Bible. And this story that we heard from 2 Kings is, is reminiscent of that, even though, you know, chronologically it preceded that story. And don't worry, y'all are going to get to hear that beloved story of Jesus next week. So for this week, I want us to really focus in on these three jam-packed verses from 2 Kings. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing an offering of first fruits to Elisha, the man of God. We don't know much about this man from Baal Shalisha. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing his hometown right. He has no name. We don't know why he came to Elisha with his offering instead of finding an offering place closer to home. We just know that he came from a foreign land with a small offering for God. Which is to say, we know that this man has faith in God and is generous because of it. You see, like we just heard during Kids in Christ, Elisha, this man, the 100 people with Elisha, they were all living through a time of famine. There hadn't been enough for anyone anywhere to eat in a very long time. But the man from Baal Shalisha brings an offering of his first fruits. Before he got on with the rest of his harvest, he dedicated the first portion of it as an offering of thanksgiving to God. This phrase that we hear, first fruits, it's actually only one word in Hebrew, and it's a word that can also be translated as promise to come. Even in this situation of extreme scarcity, a famine, the man from Baal Shalisha believed in God's promise to provide for God's people, and he gives out of deep thanksgiving and deep faith in that promise to come. Even in this time of uncertainty and fear and real, physical, fear-inducing hunger, this man from Baal Shalisha kept God in the equation. He knew that his small barley loaves, maybe at dinner roll size, came from God. He believed that these loaves stood as a symbol of God's promises that there would be more to come. And his first act of generosity, his first faithful gift, becomes the basis of God's promise fulfilled for at least a hundred people. Because we hear in this story that Elisha receives this man's offering and immediately turns around and says, give it to the people. Let them eat. Remember what I said about famine? We've got to assume that Elisha hasn't eaten in just about as long as this man from Baal Shalisha. But instead of keeping the barley loaves to himself, Elisha turns outward and looks to the needs of the people around him. Elisha, inspired by this man's generosity, doesn't use his elevated status as man of God for his own gain. He looks to his people and says, let them eat. Doesn't Elisha sound like one of those good shepherds that we heard about last week? Elisha wants to make sure that the people are fed, but as in any good story, we have to have a moment of tension. 
Enter stage left, Elisha's servant, servant, who was apparently tasked with distributing these first fruits. Elisha's servant looks at the man's offering and asks, how can I set this before a hundred people? We maybe can imagine the servant's distress. Here he is looking down at these loaves and up at the crowd of people who haven't eaten in who knows how long. He was probably baffled thinking, Elisha, I'm not optimistic here. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? There is literally not enough food here for me to give all these people. The physical reality of what he was being asked to do seemed to make his task impossible. I think it was probably like the reverse of what happened to me yesterday when Jordan and I were trying to finish packing up our U-Haul box to send it to North Carolina. I looked at the little space in the U-Haul box and I looked at the multiple boxes we still had in our garage. And I said, I'm not optimistic here. How is all that gonna fit in there? The physical reality of what we were trying to do seemed to make our task impossible. Or maybe Elisha's servant here was nervous, thinking, this can't be a good idea. What if putting this little food in front of so many hungry people does more harm than good? What if I make things worse? Elisha, are you seeing what I'm seeing? But Elisha wasn't seeing what his servant was seeing. His servant was overly focused on the physical reality in front of him. There is not enough food. And he was overly focused on his own inability to do something with it. Notice he asks, how can I set this before 100 people? Elisha's servant forgot to keep God in the equation. So Elisha repeats his directions, give it to the people and let them eat, only this time Elisha reminds his servant of God's presence in the equation. Elisha reminds us of God's promise, the people shall eat and have some left. And the servant puts the 20 barley loaves and fresh ears of grain in front of 100 people and they eat and they have some left according to the promise of the Lord. In this story, it's not that Elisha is delusional or in denial of the real physical needs of those around him. He knows the people are hungry, he is hungry, and he can see the physical not enoughness of the offering in front of him. Elisha knew that 20 loaves would not be enough for him to feed 100 people. And Elisha knew that God was still in the equation. The name Elisha means God is salvation. So Elisha's very name was a reminder to him, to those around him, and to us that when we remember God is in the equation, we have salvation. We will be provided for. There will be more than enough. Whether it's 20 loaves of bread feeding 100, five loaves and two fishes feeding 5,000, or the body and blood of Christ feeding us every week, God is salvation. 
it's hard for me to believe that this is my last Sunday with you all. And as I reflect back on our year together, I don't have any grand statements or theological revelations or charges to leave with you. But if you'll permit me, I'd like to tell one more story. I don't know if y'all know this about me, but one thing I like to do when I'm not at church is practice yoga. Over the past couple months, I've gone to the same class enough that I've started to get to know some of my fellow yoga goers. And one day I was chatting with the woman on the mat next to me and I found out that she goes to Foundations Church just down the road. And when I told her that I go to Zion, she said, oh, that's a really active church. And I, I asked her what she meant by that and she said, well, I don't think they're as big as my church, or not. She said, but I, I feel like I always hear about Zion doing amazing things in Loveland. Beloved of God, our offerings, our actions, our generosity no matter how small, are never too little for God to use to work miracles. Whether it's sending off one intern to welcome another, taking steps to end homelessness here in Loveland, giving of the first fruits of our labor or strengthening each other in faith, together we share God's abundance to transform lives through the love of Jesus. Because when we remember that God is in the equation, there will always be more than enough. Thanks be to God. Amen. For our time of sacred space this morning, we're continuing with our seasonal prayer practice. We've got our prayer flags over here. If you would like to have a prayer prayed out loud during worship this morning, please write it on the flag and leave it on the table. We'll make sure to grab it and pray it out loud. If you'd like to keep your prayer between yourself and God and whoever might walk by the prayer garden, please feel free to go ahead and plant it out there during this time. And we're also continuing with our imagery of cairns as we finish up our everyday prophecy theme this Sunday. We remember that cairns, like prophecy, like God's word, are guideposts on our journey, on our walk with Christ. So um, as we heard about first fruit offering, how God can turn the smallest offering into the biggest miracle, you're invited this morning to come build a cairn by the offering plate. We know that your monetary gifts are not the only way you offer yourselves to God, but this is a way for us to reflect on the question, how does your giving direct your walk with Christ? Welcome to this sacred space.
Whether we have faith like a mustard seed or faith like the man from Baal Shalisha, we confess our faith this morning together, strengthening one another with the use of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe, I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the, the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. one in the communion of saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our hearts and minds in prayer. God of generations, you work in us far more than we can ask or imagine. Bless the church that you have called into being across time and space and fill it with the power of your Holy Spirit for loving service. We pray for all who mark baptismal birthdays this week, especially Al Henriksen and John Monson. In your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of field and forest, streams and seas, you are the fullness of all things. As people labor in the earth, sustain your creation and bless harvests so that everyone would have food in due season. In your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God beyond borders, you rule all in all. Bless the work of humanitarians and peacekeepers. Shield those who live, work, or serve in harm's way. And bring an end to war and conflict throughout the world, especially in the places we name now, silently or aloud. In your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of healing, you open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. We remember any who are sick or suffering, families in our community who endure hunger, those who seek asylum or citizenship, and our beloved for whom death is near. And we remember all those named in our bulletin for whom we have been called to pray. For Anna, Eden, Betty, Dennis, Jan, Elaine, Becky, Kate, Mark, Jill, Jay, Mike, Father Charles, Carolyn, Steve, Lynette, Angelo, Joe, Rosemary, and Jim, and all those we name now, silently or aloud. In your mercy, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. And Lord, we give you thanks that you have called us to pray and our prayers have risen, that you hear them and to you our hearts are open. We pray for those evacuating from fire in California. Please keep them safe, Lord, and provide for their every need. We pray for Rose recovering from cancer surgery and for Mary Louise, recovering from heart surgery complications. Lord, attend to them and be with them in the midst of their healing. 
We thank you, Lord, for calling and equipping Pastor Katie, and we ask that you would bless her now and always. We pray for Katie as she moves through this new adventure, trusting that you are always with her, Lord. And we pray for Katie and Jordan on their new adventure. And Lord, we remember Sammy and her family whose dog died last night. And we just ask that you would surround them with your love and care and precious memories. And Lord, we pray for Eileen's brother, Marvin, that you would be at work in his body to help him overcome pancreatitis after gallbladder surgery. Lord, we pray for healing. And we pray for strength and healing for Ruth and the Dove family. And Lord, we thank you for the gift of our lives and the gift of new life for a new granddaughter, great, no, a new granddaughter, Olivia, and for safe travels home, Lord, bless and keep us. And we pray with thanksgiving for 24 years of marriage and the blessing of a new house for the elder family. For these prayers and all the prayers of our hearts, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of all, your love in Christ surpasses all knowledge. We give thanks for the departed who have come to know the fullness of your grace. Join our voices with theirs and all the saints in singing your praises. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, be with you always. Thank you. Please share a sign of peace with one another and with the people online. Peace.
Let us pray. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of the one who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. With 20 barley loaves, God fed a hundred people. With five loaves and two fish, God fed 5,000 people. And now with this bread and cup, there is enough for us too, and enough for the whole world. And so we give thanks and we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O Lord, that by this holy communion we may know the unity that we share with your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. United into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We will begin by communing those who are gathered online and those who need to remain in their seats or just prefer to remain in their seats to receive this gift. If you are one of those who would prefer to remain in your seats or needs to and have not received a communion kit, will you raise your hand and one of our ushers will make sure to get that to you. Now I invite you to take your bread and hear the promise that comes from Jesus. This is my body given for you. And now I invite you to drink from your cup. And as you do, hear the promise that comes from Jesus. This is my blood poured out for you. A reminder that all are welcome to Christ's table. There is nothing that you have to do to be qualified. Christ invites you. The bread today is a gluten-free bread, as it has been for many weeks, but just a reminder in case you didn't know. Um, so that is available for everyone. At the center of our trays, we have some juice, and on the outside there is wine. If you would like the common cup, please come down to one of these two stations. We're going to have three stations this morning, probably one about here, one there, and then a third one um, on the side, and we will figure it all out and make it flow. Thank you to our communion assistants. Um, if you are helping out with communion today, I'll invite you to come on up.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Just one announcement for us before we are sent out. After service today, you will have an opportunity to join in a conversation um, about life on the southern U.S. border. Um, Held Together in Christ will be meeting on the east side of the Fellowship Hall. Um, If you haven't been before, you are welcome. If you have been before, welcome back. Um, We are delighted to have uh, Pastor Diana Lyndon Johnson with us today, um, and she is going to be sharing about some of her experience um, living at the southern U.S. border. Um, And so if you have an experience, we'd love to hear from you too. Um, It's also a great opportunity to listen and learn um, and see what you might discover in that conversation. Um, finally, I'd like to invite Pastor Katie forward. I was like, what? <laughs> oh, Jordan, can you come forward too? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We have been so blessed to have Pastor Katie and Jordan with us this past year. Well, Pastor Katie has been on her internship, and today is both of their last Sunday with us, and so we wanted to do a sort of um, send-off blessing for you Um, we're going to miss you a lot. I think that goes without saying. Um, (laughs) Your presence here has been a bright sparkle of joy um, and also a fount of deep wisdom, and so we are grateful for that. Um, (laughs) And we are reminded also of the joy and power of investing in future leaders of the church that we get to share in uh, on internship. That's a real wonder and delight, and I'm really grateful to be part of a congregation that has chosen to invest in that. Um, I'll step so I can stand out here here with you. Uh, (laughs) Sorry, I lost my place. (laughs) I had to write down words because I'll get emotional. (laughs) Um, Friends in Jesus, Pastor Katie is going to take with her all of the love that you have poured into her throughout the past year, all of your prayers, all of the feedback, even the ones that maybe weren't so sparkly. Uh, (laughs) all of the wisdom and the insight and every word of encouragement. Know that you are making a difference that goes far beyond the walls of our church and even beyond state borders. Uh, (laughs) Sorry. I would like to invite Pastor Katie just to share a few words about the call that you have received. Um, Maybe some of us haven't all heard yet, so... Yeah, would you like to share? Sure, yes. Um, <laughs> I have been called to be the campus pastor at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church and Lutheran Campus Ministry in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Um, it's kind of a long mouthful of a church, but there's two <laughs> pastors, a parish pastor and a campus pastor. So I've been called to the congregation to be their minister for their Lutheran Campus Ministry. Um, it's a really, it's going to be a really special call, I think. Um, Lutheran Campus Ministry, this Lutheran Campus Ministry is the place that Jordan and I met. Um, So it's really very much like going home for us. And it's really, it's been amazing um, how God has been working throughout this whole call process. And thank you all. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's nice. (laughs) We want to say thank you to everyone who has supported the internship program, um, especially those who have served on the internship committee. Like I said, everything that you have given in support of Pastor Katie is an investment in the future of the church. And so God is going to do amazing things with your offering, and we already see it here. And we're so excited to see how you will share that offering with the world. Um, As we go out today, I want to share God's blessing with both of you. Um, So I have a prayer for you, and I invite you to whatever posture of blessing feels appropriate. You may extend a hand, open your palms up, whatever feels right. Eternal God, we thank you for Pastor Katie and Jordan and for our life together in this congregation and community. As they have been a blessing to us, Lord, and we know they have, so send them forth to be a blessing to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, friends. Bless you. And now a blessing for all of us to take with us, the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen.
in the middle of the page. Thanks be to God.